Alrighty, well, I figured, you know, it's what, 1.40 a.m.? I might as well go ahead and get myself a little tired out by playing a little bit more of this game. Of course, it seems like every time I launch this emulator, it forgets my controller settings. So let's go back through and get these back in order. So it's going to be up, down, left, right, A, B, L, R, select, start. Definitely don't want that to be that. Alrighty. So I think tonight the goal is going to be pretty quick. I just want to make my way out to Violet City. Um, I think that's Violet City. Yeah, the goal is to get out to the, uh, the town where the first gym is. Nothing too crazy. We'll go ahead and watch the tutorial on how that works. I'm just opening up the creator dashboard. Very cool. One of the things that I do like is in a lot of the more recent games, they've made this tutorial optional. I mean, this one here was as well, but uh, it feels like some of the stuff, especially like when you first launch the game, uh, when the, the game game professor goes to kind of give you the rundown on how the game works. Uh, in older games, they used to kind of give you the entire rundown of how the entire, like the whole game mechanic works. But nowadays, they uh, they kind of give you that little prompt that lets you ask how much adventure info you need. Um, but yeah. It's, it's always nice to see those quality of life improvements. It's been forever since I played through, uh, through Generation 2. Well, that's one thing I don't miss is how it felt like uh, in older generations you'd run into a wild Pokemon like every third step. Um, especially with Sword and Shield where basically all of the encounters are overworld encounters now. It is really nice because you can really just kind of see and avoid everything that you don't feel like dealing with. I just want to get where I'm going. So the big question is, um, Sprout Tower is usually pretty easy for me because I always pick Cyndaquil, but since this is going to be my first room, the Chikorita, do I want to just basically brute force it with Tackle and let Chikorita get kind of overleveled for the first gym, or do I want to kind of mix up my strategy and catch a new teammate early and not lean on my starter for the first gym or two? Um, it's obviously easy to overlevel. Um, it just takes a little grinding, which is nothing too crazy, but it might be kind of fun to force myself to take a different course of action. grass without having to fight something else. I'm gonna go ahead and get, what is it, the map card from him? Yeah, I'd love to learn some stuff. I'm new at this. Seems good. Hey, you learn something new every day. funny in the uh, in the remakes heart gold and soul silver he gives you running shoes instead um, but this was before running was introduced into the franchise so you get to walk everywhere until you get the bike hey there we go spoke too soon oh boy I mean that's what I'm here for though gotta get some levels if I'm gonna have any chance against the first couple gyms It's 
it's funny, the, uh, the mechanic of having your mom save money in this game is really nice, because when you get towards the end game, if you've kind of been spending a lot on things like Pokeballs and potions, uh, you can be kind of bankrupt when you go to take on the Elite Force, so being able to kind of go back to your house and pick up a bunch of extra cash can be really helpful. But it always made me mad when you go in there, uh, and there just wouldn't be as much as you should have saved, because your mom kept going on, like, buying stuff for you at the store, like stuffed animals and potions and things, with your own money. It's always frustrating. There he is, Youngster Joey. Did you guys know that Radita is in the top percentage of Raditas? I miss this game. Oh wait, we've got to be friends with Joey. Let's do it. I'm trying not to use uh, emulator speed up much in this run, because it's easy to fly through a game in a couple hours if you can speed it up, but it also makes it kind of nauseating to follow along with. Like, if this was a, a DS game, where the the game really kind of runs slow, even with emulator speed up, it would be more bearable, but when this thing runs at, like, 20 times its normal speed, it just kind of looks and sounds like a bunch of nonsense, and it really kind of will make you nauseous if you're not careful. few games that I think playing with a controller is more comfortable. I always feel like I get hunched over the uh, the keyboard when I try and play on there, but, you know, Pokemon games came from a console, so. starters that evolves at 14 instead of 16? Uh, I can't remember. We'll find out in four levels. fighting all of the trainers. It might be a little unnecessary, but it, uh, I don't know. I used to spend a lot of time as a kid skipping basically every trainer that I could, and it gets fine, but I consistently was underleveled, and I always found it frustrating. Um, once I started fighting all the trainers, it just made the game so much more pleasant to play through. It's kind of, I've got this aversion to skipping over trainers if I don't have to. Even silly little bug catchers like this with level 2 Caterpies. Four of them. Ugh. Oh man.
poison, right? Well, at least we didn't get poison. That's good. There's always so much suspense in the early games. I have to put a lot of thought into how many tackles I want to use. this little bit of grass. Yeah, that sounds about right. This puts us at Violet City, which is kind of the the soft goal that I had when I set out on the stream, but I think I might fool around while I'm here a little bit. I'm trying to think. I usually, as I said, I usually start with Cyndaquil, so I've kind of got like a rough team in mind for what I like to have when I play through, but starting with Chikorita is making me have to think about all of that again. I think I'm just going to go ahead and kill the first floor to a Sprout Tower. Tackle should be more than enough to kind of take down a couple of the bell sprouts, even though it's going to be slow goings. I think training up something like a Pidgey would be even slower at this point. tackles. Eventually this game will get to the point where I'll have to make choices. That'll be fun. Alright, first floor down. Now, you know what, I might just go ahead and finish the Sprout Tower and then I'll just pick up next time with the gym. though I wasn't just there five minutes ago. That's fine. I think if I remember correctly, Joey will actually uh, level up until he has Eradicate instead of his top percentage, Radita. I'll see if I can get him there by the end of this playthrough. Every time he challenges me to a battle, I'll make sure to go back and fight him. It's going to be really slow, though, until we get cut or the bike or fly or something just to make shortcutting back there a little easier. I'd be impressed with how much damage we're doing if I wasn't almost four times the level of the enemy. Make 
actually. It looks like at this rate, by the end of this episode, I'll be able to figure out if, uh, if Chikorita evolves at 14. I think one of them evolves at 18. I think it might be uh, Totodile that evolves at 18, but I honestly don't feel like looking it up right now. stashed up here. Yep. There we go. I think after this we'll be up onto the top floor and there's gonna be three trainers up there along with the guy at the top that'll give uh, the cut. Oh, no, it's Flash. I think it's Flash. Yeah, it's Flash. As you get cut in the Elix Forest later on after the second gem. I pay no attention to the fact that I know this game like the back of my hand. I definitely didn't play it about a thousand times as a kid. It's funny, I played it a lot and I had a handful of Pokemon that I had just manually grinded up to level 100. I still couldn't take on the Battle Tower that you get access to at the end of the game, so I might try and have a little bit of fun there if I can figure out how to train properly for this generation. The more recent games I've gotten pretty good with the whole IV breeding, EV training process, but these older games used, I think they were called DVs, and to be completely honest, I don't understand how they work. Um, I never really looked into it that much, but that could be something fun to do if, uh, if I end up getting a fair number of views on this, is just to try and see how the, uh, the competitive scene at the Battle Tower was back in, I don't know, the year 2000. Did they actually have competitive Pokemon back in 2000? I know now they've got the VGC, which is some giant tournament, and there's online communities like Smoggin that make a big deal out of uh, battling competitively, but way back in the day when you needed to use link cables and be physically in person with people, I really don't know if they did any tournaments like that. Should actually check and make sure I'm not about to run out of tackles before we go into the last fight. We'll wing it. I don't feel like walking all the way back down just yet. It's funny, I was talking to one of my co-workers um, a year ago. We've been working from home <laughs> since early-ish March. Um, God, it feels like it was like a couple weeks ago. Um, and I had mentioned something, I think it was Ladyba uh, as a Pokemon, and he just kind of hits me off like the, oh, that's one of, that must be one of those new ones, I don't know that Pokemon, and I was like, yeah, I mean, it was introduced in like 1999-2000, I don't know if new is quite the word, but he's one of those Gen 1-er guys, he's a huge fan of Generation 1 and does believe that it's kind of like the be-all and end-all of Pokemon, and he just rejects every other generation that came since. So, I guess even Pokemon that are old enough to get drafted into the military are new. Yeah, Lediba was created as a Pokemon before my brother that's in college. Kind of weird to think about how long this game's been around. And because I said I can't let trainers go, we're just going to fight this one too. So I'm really curious. Twitch says I have two viewers right now, but it seems like every single time I go live, I consistently have one. I don't know if that's something from Streamlabs, where it has to be like a viewer in order to watch, or if I actually have two people here, but either way, hello. I don't stream much, this is like stream number the second, so this will be, uh, I don't know, hopefully a regular thing unless I get bored with it.
Really? I, uh, I, as I said, I've never really used it, so I have no idea, um, really what to expect from it, you know what I mean? Like, it's one of those things where after getting my butt kicked at, um, the, the first and second gyms once or twice when I tried playthroughs with it, I just kind of went back to Cyndaquil. Um, but it is always nice to have one of those Pokemon you can lean on to just cover all the HMs. A lot of them kind of suck, and it really, it, it's a bite in the ass to have to have, you know, half your team have a move slot wasted. For no reason. Gotta be careful, we just got identified. Hey, Troy. There it is. Alright, so. I am still feeling lazy, and HMs don't really have a lot of value, or HMs, Jesus, potions don't have a lot of value once you start getting up to like the 30, 40 HP range. So I'm just going to burn that, and we're just going to wing it against the the Sage up here. I figure with the level gap that I'm going to have here, I can uh, just kind of razor leaf my way through the fight. That's fair. That's fair, yeah. I, uh, I don't know. It, it, it sucks, because, like, especially in later games, I try and optimize my teams, because I understand the mechanics that run them more. So, wasting a slot on a bunch of different team members just to have, you know, different moves wasted where I could get a little bit more type coverage or a little more variety always sucks. But, uh, I know, like, in, uh, in Ruby and Sapphire, I always get a Lightning, because it can learn, I think it's, like, Strength, Cut, Surf, and Rock Smash? Um, so having one Pokemon that you can just load up with four of the mandatory moves is is, is really nice. I'm actually a huge fan of how in uh, Sword and Shield and um, the Sun and Moon games, how they just eliminated HMs entirely and gave you like the ride pager. Um, it just really feels like it doesn't bog down your team with a bunch of crap that you don't need it to have. And this will be fine. So I'm pretty comfortable just razor leafing my way through the uh, through his hoot hoot. But there goes our last tackle. Oh, he has a second bell sprout. Well, we'll make it work. We have stab on the razor leaf, so I'm just gonna operate under the assumption that's gonna be what we would call close enough. That's plenty of damage. Oh, that's a crit. Still, it's got an increased crit to the ratio. We'll be fine. Since we're not double, not very effective against the Hoot Hoot, this one should cruise by pretty quickly. So we'll be doing about twice as much damage on average. Or not. Never mind, I guess it's a high enough level that it's going to start cutting into the amount of damage we can do. So did the AIs just use stuff like Foresight just to waste time to make it easier, or are they just completely random? Is that really, uh... I don't think Foresight does a whole lot for, for Tackle, at least not in this situation. Yeah. Either way, that's done. We get our HM. And then I think I'm going to wrap things up by going back and beating up Joey's Rat one more time so that we can kind of leave with no open cases, things that we got to take care of. HM5, there we go. And because I'm lazy, we're going to use that escape rope that we just picked up right before that fight. Now, because I do not feel like wandering around with no uh, tackle power points, 
Because that was more annoying in that last fight than I thought it was. I am going to heal up real quick. Oh, it's super late. What is it, 2 a.m. here? Ugh. I'm supposed to work tomorrow. Alright, well this will be quick. I don't have any other trainers to fight back here, so it's just going to be whatever I run into in the wild, but I'll just run from that stuff now. I'm a high enough level that I'm not really going to gain any value from the experience that I get, so... I can't wait to get fly. And a bird, I guess, because... Yeah, one's useless without the other. I said I'd run, but this is just so easy. Also, I guess we got our answer. Chikorita didn't evolve at 14, so I guess it just pops at 16 like everything else. I forget, I swear there was one game where, and I think it was the Grass Starter Revolved at 14. I don't remember what it was, it's been a little bit, but... Ooh, Poison Powder, that'll be nice. Yeah, we'll forget Growl, because status moves that only change stats are for nerds. I think now for the rest of this route we can hop ledges and just kind of bypass all of the grass, so that'll be quick. Let's do it, Joey. Little Razor Leaf. It's probably gonna Oko, okay, and then I'll just sit back up to Violet City, and I'll save at the Poke Center. That way, uh, next time when I go and pick this up, I'll just be able to run straight into the gym. Um, with any luck, we'll actually be able to hit level 16 and evolve against the gym trainers before we have to fight Faulkner. That way we don't have to sit there and struggle with the little grass type against his birds. Grass. Feels like we got off easy. <laughs> of course. Should I get a polywag, actually? Where do you get water stones in this game? <sighs> See, because I can't trade because it's on an emulator. I think water stones are one of those uh, things where you have to befriend the right trainer and they'll call you eventually when they find an item. Um, I don't really feel like holding out with a Poliwhirl for until the game happens to randomly give me what I need to evolve it, so I'm going to pass on that and pick something a little more reliable. Like, I would love to use Gengar and Alakazam. They're a couple of my favorites from the, the earlier generations, but I really just don't think they're good if I can't trade to get the evolution, because I don't feel like being stuck with a Haunter and a Kadabra the whole time. But either way... I'm all healed up. I've been live for about a half hour. I think that's good enough for should be asleep now. So I'm going to go ahead and shut things down. Uh, Steve Maria, thank you for a couple comments. It's been fun getting to interact with people a little bit. I, uh, I'll catch you guys next time.